Sugumi and her friends are going to have to earn their keep at the DWMA. In my review of Soul Eater Not, Episode 2. This is the story of three friends picked to live together and have their lives turned upside down every single night by a psycho bitch housemaid who would love nothing more than to stab you in your sleep. This is the real world Soul Eater Not. First and foremost, if you're going to watch this series, you need to take the title in the most literal of senses. This is not Soul Eater. This is not going to be the wacky, rambunctious adventures of Maka, Blackstar, and Death the Kid. This is going to be a coming-of-age story about three girls who are at this school. And I think when you think about it in that sense, it's actually not all that bad. It has its own story that it's going to tell, and it's making that very clear. Because in this episode, the amount of cameos has been reduced big time. Except, of course, for Kim, who appears as one of the people who are at this uh, girl's dorm, and she is a total witch, if you get the joke there, if you read the manga series, because they didn't really reveal that too much in the old anime version. But anywho, what's really cool here is uh, she's basically just sort of like taking everybody's money in the dorm, and that's where the main conflict comes this week, because when they move into this place, they're given a certain amount of money, and they all end up spending it on ridiculous stuff, especially Anya this week. In fact, she's the character they focus on a lot this week, and we basically learn, and they don't really outright say it, but it's pretty obvious. She's sort of had enough of her weird, snubby lifestyle, and she wants to live what she considers a commoner's life. And she's just enjoying all of the natural things that everybody seems to take for granted. And she's really enjoying all of that, especially when they get a job. And this is when it sort of turns into that like sort of reality TV show kind of thing where they're all just working as maids in this cafe, and I thought this was going to be maybe like turning into some sort of training session, but no, it's literally just serving tea and, you know, looking at them in cute outfits, which isn't exactly awful, but it's not exactly exciting either. What I do love is in the middle of the episode when they're actually hanging out in the dorms. They're all sleeping, they all go to bed, and in the middle of the night, there's this one housemaid who's like the master of the house, and she just starts reading this book right next to Sugami's bed. And this that's already, like, creepy enough. But then she starts to, like, attack her. And then this action scene ensues where Meime starts to fight in her sleep. And this is, like, our first hint to, like, how powerful she's actually going to be in the series. And she seems like she's actually going to be something of a threat. But the way this chick looks, she just looks like she's something out of misery. She looks like Kathy Bates with a weird club hammer in her hands. And it's just really, really ridiculous and funny, and I'm glad they included a little more action this week. But it was definitely overcome a little bit more by all of the uh, ridiculous comedy bits. However, there are a few new characters they introduced this week, which seems like they might actually be somewhat interesting. There is Kana Alter, who is this little girl who looks like she's some sort of, like... I'm guessing she can, like, see into the future and shit. She has these, like, tarot cards, and she can... Basically, she's, like, the psychic of the group. I don't know how she's going to evolve as the series goes on. She doesn't seem like she's going to be a powerhouse type of character. However, if there's one thing that Soul Eater has taught us, it is not to judge a book by its cover, because she could end up turning into something ridiculous way later on. But there's also the, the characters of Akane and Clay. They're the Meister and Weapon. They look like they're going to be pretty important, and I only say that because they have distinctive character designs. This is one of those shows where if you're going to be important, you probably have to look like you're important. There's also this one maid character who is the one who's giving them the tour their entire time, and I think her name was Eternal Feather, and I'm not sure what's up to that. I'm, I'm guessing her parents were, like, at Woodstock or something. Uh, but otherwise, this was just a fun, cute, bubbly episode of Soul Eater Not. Uh, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Uh, but I am interested to see where it is going, so I'm definitely going to drop a 7 out of 10 on this episode. I still think that Soul Eater Not has a lot of potential. Um, at the moment, I think it might only be for fans of the original series, because there still are a lot of things that are referenced from the original series, and if you're just jumping into this, it's just going to seem like a really weird-toned like high school kind of comedy type of thing. But I don't know, maybe the series is just going to turn into a big action fest later, but I'm not going to judge it by the first two episodes completely alone, I want to see more. What I can say is I'm interested to see where the story is going, especially with the whole dynamic of, you know, who is going to work with who. Like, is Meimei going to be Sugami's Meister, or is it going to be Anya? Not to mention this series has some not-so-subtle Yuri undertones. I'm not sure what to take from that, but if you're a fan of that type of stuff, power to you. Otherwise, like I said, 7 out of 10 episode, pretty decent animation and artwork. The story gave me a few laughs. 
However, I'm interested to see how the series is going to evolve and possibly tie into the other parts of Soul Eater. So there it is, guys. If you're fans of the original Soul Eater, whether it be the manga series or the anime series, check it out. You might get something out of it. So if you guys had a chance to check out this week's episode of Soul Leader Not, I would love to hear your thoughts about this week's episode. How are you warming up to this brand new spinoff? Did you like any of the action scenes they included this week? Did you think everybody just looked all adorable in their maid outfits? Or do you think the series just plain sucks? Remember guys, before you leave, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps out these videos a lot. Remember, if you also want to see all of our latest content and reviews, make sure and subscribe to the channel. And you can also check us out on Facebook on Twitter. I'll put links to both of those in the description box below. So, I'll see you next time, guys. Super Kami Guru 9000, out.